not as catchy as the other other one. I reckon I will uh, work on that. And again, you now that we have Crisp on, I can't hear the music anymore. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I've, I've I've lost it. It was just it was just this very faint like beep beep. It was like a you know the defibril the the heart monitor machines at at uh, in movies and stuff. That's what it sounded like. Yes, yeah, sir. Anyway, welcome all to uh, to this latest episode of our Old Souls and Seekers podcast. Excited to have you here. Um, we've had some pretty incredible things start to show up of late with our clients that we really wanted to highlight and share, uh, because as good as the results that we have in our lives, honestly, I think it's way more exciting for us when we share this information and knowledge and practices with others and they go on to create absolutely mind-bendingly incredible results. Um, and this week has just been one of those weeks where um, one of our clients uh, just shared something. And it was it was kind of perfect because uh, I had the privilege of uh, speaking with her the week prior, and we actually kind of did some, some work and practice together. Um, so I, I got to see both the version of her when she's like really, really in it. And then obviously the, uh, the other side of it, which was just beautiful and unexpected in the most profound ways. So today's um, show, we're really going to delve into the power of surrender and the power of trust. I think the two kind of go hand in hand. Um, but what I would hope to highlight for you is uh, a few things on this episode. One, you know, you, you probably hear that word get thrown around quite a bit, surrender, surrender, surrender. And um, I just wanna start off by saying that surrender is not uh, waving the white flag or it's not sticking your head in the sand and going like, fuck it, you know, it'll just be what it'll be, right? It's not that cop out. Um, life is what it is. It's, it's none of those things. Surrender is a very conscious and very active practice that allows you to be in what uh, Buddhism calls equanimity, but it act, allows you to be in the acceptance of what is. And more importantly, I should probably say, and what is not. Right. And so that's kind of where, where people get stuck. So that's really the world that we're going to be delving into. And I'll, I'll share the story uh, here in a little bit. But, uh, bro, anything you want to throw into our surrender trust gumba? I say, why don't you get rocking with the story because of the sensitive nature of the topic? Please give caveats and disclaimers yes. about points of view and such and such and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, tell the story and let's uh, let's go from there as you as a uh, jump off point. It was so funny. I was watching, and I and I'm assuming this is because on social media, uh, anything that is considered uh, anti-vax is uh, is being taken off. So I was watching this uh, YouTube video of a guy, and it was really interesting. He was uh, all he does is he he looks at scientific data, like peer-reviewed science data, and he just shares kind of the, the point of views. Um, and he, it was cool because he was actually coming from like both sides of the, of the coin, but at least six times throughout the video, he's like, this is not an anti-vax, you, you know, video. Like I just, it was just so funny. And I was like, oh yeah, that's because. <laughs> so, uh, with that, uh, this is not an anti-vaccine promo by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'm, I'm all for you. You get to choose your own life and what goes in you and out of you. And that's just my point of view, but, um, I've had a lot of stress about what comes out of me and then what goes into me. <laughs> um, one, um, one of our clients is, um, in the medical field. She's in the medical profession. She's been there for, for quite some time, really loves what she does. Um, and happens to live in Canada. And I don't know, I, I didn't know this until she informed me, but, um, Canada, Countrywide is doing a green pass mandate, meaning that every single uh, person above the age of 12 has to get a vaccine, no questions asked. 
Um, or, or you're basically like blacklisted. Like the only place that you will ever be able to go would be uh, maybe to a grocery store. And that's about it. Like no going to work, no getting on public transportation, no going to restaurants, like no going out to show, like literally nothing. So it's interesting because um, New York City, I think, was the first that kind of started this this mandate wave. But, um, you know, it's just in a, in a city. This is uh, countrywide, which is which is pretty intense. And she was telling me some stories about uh, how they're going to, like, go to schools and basically, like, read off names of people that have not been vaccinated and give these kids vaccines, like, at the school. Uh, without parents' permission or anything like that, which is just I don't I don't know which side of the coin you're on, but like to me that's fucking like I heard that I was just absolutely crazy. I can't believe that they would be able to do that to your child. Um, so in any event, I'm I'm painting this picture because uh, I really want you to get like the gravity of the situation. So basically, she had two weeks. It was it was like it's all happening super fast in Canada, and she had two weeks to. Um, basically submit to this. And one of the things that she told me, she's like, look, if it was, if it was like, okay, get this one, you know, jab and like go on with my life. Uh, that's one thing, but the document that they're having her sign as a medical professional is that you now agree to take this vaccine, you know, the, the one, two things plus every other booster and any else, anything else that is required for perpetuity. And at that point she was like, no, like I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, like if it, it meant like, okay, I'm going to do this the one, one and done thing. And you know, like she even said like, I, I didn't want to, but I, I would have been able to get my head around that and like move yeah. forward. But the idea of just like, at any point they'll be like, okay, go get another shot. Like she, she was just not willing to do that. Yeah. It's like your body's not your own at that point in time. That's it. So, and I, and I totally get that, you know? And so, um, so now, so she knows that this is coming, right? So this means like losing job, losing income, something that she, she loves to do. Um, she's got a husband and kids at home and, uh, giving up on all of these other, you know, things and, and niceties that I guess we, we have of being able to go out and do things. And so with that, uh, choice comes a lot of sadness, a lot of anger, a lot of um, just upset, right? Like, and you can really get that uh, to make that kind of decision or choice for yourself, for your family, for your life uh, is really difficult because you're being basically being put in a corner uh, where you don't really have that much of a choice. Um, and then in the not choosing choice, I guess, um, you're releasing all of these things. So obviously it's a lot to deal with. And I think, you know, anyone that is going through that, you know, my, my heart goes out to you. Uh, and I, and I hope I'm really like, I'm not over traumatizing this because this is actually exactly, you know, how she would, she was telling me the story. Um, and I want you to get like the, the severity of the situation, right? It's a lot. It's a lot. And I know a lot of people are going through that right now. And again, like if you are, I hope this, this next part of the story gives you hope um, and inspires you because it's a story of like unimaginable, <laughs> incredible things. And so this woman has been working with us for almost a year at this point, right? And so she's very well versed in the practices and the awareness effect that we talked to you guys about, right? And so as all of this stuff is coming up, where most people are going, and, and you don't have to look far to see it, is where most people are going is they are going out into the streets. They are fighting. They are you know, blaming the other side, there's arguing, they're writing these incredible posts, like they're doing all of these things. Um, which as I said to one of our other students, it's like, to me, to me, and this is just, I don't know, you guys painted however you want. To me, it feels like you're throwing a lot of hot air out into the wind, right? Like, like, is it really, like, is you holding a sign and taking an Instagram photo and like all, like, I mean, is it really doing anything? 
You know, to me, it just seems like this weird thing that people, I don't know, whatever, I'm not going to get into that. Instead, every time she saw a part of herself that was terrified, she went and did our awareness effect practices, right? And she just went in and started to give the parts inside of herself that felt uneasy, felt scared, um, felt attacked, felt super sad. And she just would continue to do the practices and sit and sit and accept and release and heal and all of these things to the point that she got to this place where there was just a, um, there was like a calm and an acceptance of exactly that which is and exactly that which is not. And, you know, like she got to a place where, okay, if she loses the job, you know, then, then that's what's meant to fall away and something else gets to be created. Losing income, okay, well, that's going to fall away and then something else gets to be created. Like she just worked through every single layer of this experience internally. She didn't go fight. She didn't argue with her bosses. She didn't try to convince people. She didn't do any of the things that you would normally think like this is what the person should do. You know, like go talk to your bosses and fight and this and that. She didn't do any of that. She just really just sat and sat and sat and went in and deeper and deeper and find another layer of like terror and fear and just, right? She was sitting with us. She was sitting with coaches. She was sitting with other people. So like two weeks, right, of this process. So last Friday was the day that she needed to hand in all the documents, you know, choose this, choose that. And she knew, like she handed in the documents with this knowing that this was it, like, Friday was the last day that I'm going to, I'm going to be uh, working with these people. And that was it. And there was obviously, listen, there's still sadness and still that there, but there was this, this calm peace around having chosen that, that path from a grounded, stable place, not erratic, not freaking out, not frantic, right? Like just really grounded place. Monday rolls around, doesn't show up for work, obviously, um, and gets an email from her workplace saying that, now again, mind you, countrywide, right? Like this whole thing's happening. This is not just like her, her hospital or anything like that. This is like countrywide. She gets an email saying that they've accepted her decision and then they want her to come back to work. She was, be, I mean, like beyond shocked, obviously, right? Because it's, it's unheard of. It's like, you know, the, the, the way that I uh, envisioned it, it's like you get put into this doorless, windowless box, right? Like cemented box. Like there's no, there's no exit from this place. And in doing the work that she did internally, a trap door shows up that was not there before out of the blue. And it's not really out of the blue because truth be told, like we see this happen time and time and time again. You know, like one of our other clients was uh, having a, a heck of a time with, with a roommate and um, it was just it was a whole hell of a loo. And like, she kept releasing and releasing and releasing and releasing and ends up moving to this place, paying less money, is now going to be in this incredible community with other like-minded healers and practitioners and all these things. It's like when we find the depth of our alignment and we surrender to that which is and that which is not, alignment and this divine force will always put you where you need to be. Now, that's not always easy. In fact, I will say it takes infinitely more courage to let go, surrender, and trust to that force than to go out and fight for what you believe is right. You know, like even in my world, between February of mid-February of this year to July 23rd, I don't know what that is, that's... Uh, 
five months. Yeah, five yeah. months. Mm -hmm. In five months, Fanny and I went from making a decision to move to Florida because a voice while we were looking just said, yes, here, now, to both of us. And like, I'm, you know, this is my world. Like I play in this all the time, but like my wife, who's the most indecisive person on planet earth, like can't choose what to wear, can't choose what to eat, like all this stuff, right? She even heard this thing was like, here, go. And now I'm watching everything that's happened in New York since we've left. I didn't know any of that was going to happen, right? But like some divine force was like, you don't get to be here for this. You don't have to deal with this. Like you get to move here. And I can tell you here, calmer, quieter, a lot less noise, a lot less hectic. Like it just, there's a piece here that is in my alignment. It's like alignment moved me here because it was like, this is where we continue to do the work. I sat with someone today, for example, a guy I know is like in our mini practice. And she was like, you feel so rooted, like, like a, a depth of rootedness that I've never felt from you. And I was like, you know what? It's just easier for me to do here. I couldn't have come up with these steps and, and uh, our clients, like you can't come up with this by writing a list and, and figuring out how to move this piece over there and this piece over there and convincing this person that and all that. Like that's an impossibility. And yet in that world, in the impossible world of being boxed in, of not knowing which way to move or all it's in that moment where we just surrender, let go and trust that all of this absolutely wild stuff gets to happen. And it really just leaves you in awe. It reminds me of, um, remember in V for Vendetta? Yeah. Where, he, where he puts her in that, like a uh, fake torture scenario where he puts her yeah. in the little room. And then at the moment where he says to her, okay, we're going to take you out behind the shed and we're going to shoot you now. And she's like, okay. And she's like, just so still and rooted and grounded. And then he's like, oh, he's like, you have no fear now. He's like, you're free. And it opens the door and she figures out that it's all a lie. But then she walks outside and has a panic attack and the whole thing. Because yeah. in that moment, it breaks. It's funny, like he built an illusion to create a breakthrough for her. But then she walks out of the illusion and goes back into her old ways. And there's a line over there where he tells her, he's like, find your, he's like, find that place again. He goes, what was true in there is as true out here. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and that's, and that's the thing, like, you know, even for this woman, like in her situation, right. The alignment was, Hey, you can still come back to work, but it might've for somebody else that alignment when it may have been losing that job and then getting something that's so much better, whether it's more, um, something that they enjoy more or something that produces more money for them or whatever it might be. So it's not like, uh, I'm saying that because it's like, we don't get to choose what that is. Yeah. You know, like that, it, that's just going to show up for anybody. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, even in our lives, we have story after story of things that have occurred like that recently um, that I won't go into all the details here. because we already told a pretty long story, but there really is something to be said. And it's something we share often with our clientele, or we kind of ask over, over a very long period of time, we've asked the same question. Uh, we say, you know, it, in a moment where you're really dealing with some intense struggle, and it actually feels like you're going to die. Like if this doesn't get resolved, you're going to die. And you've tried everything. You're out of resources. You're out of energy. And then you go, okay, I'm done trying. I'm done doing anything about this. And then it's like last minute, right before everything goes to shit, it's almost like this magical thing comes along. Somebody comes, something comes, something just helps resolve it. Um, and, and, I think in the 10 years we've asked people whether they've had that experience across the board, everybody has said, yes, I've had that experience. And so if anecdotally we could see a large volume of people are having that experience, let's assume that if not everybody, most people have had this experience, we want to presume or at least, you know, anecdotally assume that there's some kind of phenomena here at play. And for anybody who's done plant medicine or has done like really deep experiences, even, um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Where you do the hot room? Not a hot room, but um, uh, sweat lodge. Yes, a sweat lodge, stuff like that. You know, like the whole experience is is about surrender. The magic always 
happens when you give in and you can no longer stand what's occurring and you say, it's not up to me anymore. And then it's true because the, the field spirit, whatever you want to call it, comes and says, cool, the moment you get out of the way, I can work for you. <laughs> you know, like I can, I can write this ship and I, I know so much more or this intelligence knows so much more than anything me or you or any of our conditioned minds can, can possibly comprehend, especially being limited to only three dimensional views where yeah. spirit would have the you know, multidimensional nature of reality at its disposal. So it's like, what can happen is, is usually beyond our expectations of the mind. And so a door that seems like it's not even there, you know, to use Elon's words, like a trap door can really appear as if by magic for people. And honestly, we see that all the damn time. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I'm, I'm going to reiterate this because I said it before, but it's, when you first start down this path, um, because none of us have been trained this way, we've had experiences, but it's not like trained enough where we we can rely on those experiences. So, you know, Guy mentioned, we, we ask a bunch of people, right? And every single person that I ask, you know, like life is always going to go like this, right? It's You've never met anyone where their life goes like this all the time. You've never had life go like this all the time. There's this delusion that we're supposed to go like this all the time, but like, that's just not the reality, right? So life goes up like this and goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And I would and actually, I would actually offer that it, it does move up and down, but the downs never hit the same downs as before. It's like the stock market, it goes down, but it doesn't like hit the, yeah. the last all-time low. It's always kind of on an upward trajectory, but it's non-linear. And, 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 and honestly, it's probably not even like this. It's more like <laughs> yeah. know, with like loops and, and turns and yeah. all these kind of things. It's like we just live in non... There's no time. So like production of things coming into your life are non-linear. There no, doesn't have to be a uh, procedure or steps that you follow to get there. Yeah. So with that, it's like, right, when we're here... We're usually very excited, but as we get to the top, something happens. We start kind of freaking out. It's called like that upper limit range, right? We're like, we hit the RPM of how much we believe we're worthy of and we can accept. And we're like, is this, this is too good to be true. How long will this last? Like it hasn't lasted before. And we start freaking out and then we kind of like hit that curve and then we start dropping. And when we first start dropping, what you start to notice is the part that just is trying to course correct, right? So like when we make that dip, it's like, okay, I, I got to do more of this. I got to do less of that. I, and we start like reaching for stuff frantically to try to right the ship, quote unquote. And in that franticness now, so now we're in like frantic survival, save this, you know, direction of the ship energy. And what we end up doing is we keep, because we're creating now from this energy, Guy and I talk about this all the time. It's not about the action. It's about the energy behind the action. So even think when you're going up like this, there's like hope, there's excitement, there's love, there's passion, there's all this stuff that's like fueling it. And you even start to see different things along the path. And you're like, yes, more of that. And it just kind of like builds and builds and builds. And then when it gets to that place where you can't handle that good, now the energy is shifting. Right now, the energy is like, oh, God, how do I hold on to this? And now we're looking at scarcity, worry, fear. And now you can see how that goes. And then once we start going down, now it's that frantic rush to like try to fix it because the shit's falling apart. It's all broken. Da, da, da. And then the, the lower and lower you go, what? The more and more frantic you get. Now you're just running really fast. Like I, you get in that crazy ass feeling of overwhelm, but because the energy behind every action that you are taking is coming from that place. That is what you are manifesting. Just more and more and more and more of that. And there's a part in all of us, we talked about this yesterday on one of our trainings. There's a part in all of us that loves to meddle and loves to fix. But it gets juice. It gets, it, it feels good when it's useful, right? So in order for a part that's fixing stuff all the time to feel useful, what does it need? It needs shit to fix. So it's going to break shit all the time in order to fix it. And then you're just, you're running around putting out fires. And then at some point, all of us get to this some point where it gets so intense, so much, so fast, so bad that we do what? We naturally go, fuck it. I can't. I just can't. I can't 
fight this anymore. And it's in that moment where we're like, all right, if I hit the fucking ground and I die, like then I hit the ground and I die, right? It's like what he was talking about for V for Vendetta. And it's in that place that now the energy shifts. Because now you're not attached. You're not trying to resist something. You're not trying to fight for something. You're just back to that place of like, I fully surrender to that which is. And that's a powerful place to be. Like for some people it happens because they just get beaten around to it. But for others, it's like you can choose that place powerfully. And that's really what our work is about. And then at that moment, that thing swoops in, that energy to to just provide the person, the money, the this, the that, like something always shows up. So let's, let's, so I want to talk about like for people here. So it's useful is like, how do we not wait for those moments? Because what you're talking about is like, like you, you hit those moments when uh, a resource runs out completely, whether it's financial, energetic, you know, just like, you're like, okay, I have no more resources. I have nothing left to give. And then of course there's all these resources around you, unseen resources, right? The things we can't identify with our eyes, but we can feel. Um, and, and that's where we start seeing, okay, it, it resources you. So we want to look at here for you guys is like, well, how do we tap into that on a regular basis? Yeah, exactly. And I, and I want to say just to kind of kick this off, this part of it off, what I see is that like e- Elon's talking about, right? This upward trajectory. And then there's all this energy behind it. But as you create more hope and more energy, what you're also doing, and it's not anyone's fault, just kind of natural. You're actually starting to become more and more attached to what's happening because there's pleasure, positive outcomes, fluidity, right? And so there's this kind of um, attachment that starts building in the system because it, it wants this moment to last. It wants this experience to last. On the opposite end of the spectrum, when things are going totally haywire, you're you're in avoidance, right? And right now, it's, you see the same thing playing out with what's happening in the world with with vaccines and whatnot, where it's like the people who are like holding on to that safety and hope to like go back to normalcy or like getting attached to this specific outcome, um, and then people who are like my body, my choice, right, in resistance, and so you start operating from that place, and and that's what we find on both ends of the spectrum. You're kind of going to end up at the same location. Right, because whatever you avoid or whatever you get attached to ultimately just creates more disappointment in your life, and so it's, it really is the middle path. And a lot for a lot of people, um, the middle path seems like some being somewhere in between those two. Okay, and that makes sense because that's how when we think in a linear fashion, that's what the middle path seems like. But try to think beyond the linearity. Try to think beyond the mind about how things work in our universe. Everything is inclusive. Everything is always working at the same time. So the the middle path is right, actually holding both ideas with the same level of compassion and neutrality without making any judgments or uh, predispositions about either one of them. And and this is something I, w- I was just talking to a friend of mine, and I've been mentioning this to a few people recently. I said it's, it's a little bit odd that as humans, we haven't thought to evolve or to get to the point where we can actually hold two contradictory ideas contradicting ideas and our beingness without completely getting erratic or angry at at everything because it seems like the way that everything's politicized today that we have to choose one side of the spectrum or the other but even if you look at you know simple example like in politics left versus right it's really blended way more than it's ever been you know like ideals that liberals held very strongly five to ten years ago today are very commonplace for people on the right to have and so like it's weird that we're like becoming tribal instead of being like, you know what, I can have these ideals and I can have these ideals. And that doesn't make me have to report to either one of these structures or parties or anything else. I could just hold these two ideas in myself. Sometimes one makes sense more than the other. Sometimes this makes sense more. Sometimes neither one of them makes sense, but like, why wouldn't I be able to hold both those ideas at the same time? So the practices that we work on, right? Like you can, you can understand that from the mind and that will be like, okay, maybe give you some awareness what we really want to work on is like what this client of ours did, which is how do you work your body? How do you work your energetic system so that it finds its ground and neutral point on a regular basis? Cause from the neutral point, you are not in attachment to any specific outcome. And you're also not avoiding and fighting something that may or may not occur in your life. And so you're giving neither one energy. You're in a highly resourced place 
and you're co-regulating with the field or spirit or call it what you will, right? And so from that place, it can actually start working with you. And this is what we uh, we kind of often talk about the three stages of evolution for people's mindset um, and their beingness. And just to kind of outlay them here really quick, the first one is usually when people are like in more of a victim mentality. They don't see that they have any say over what's happening in their life. And these are the people that usually have... Um, some kind of thought like it's happening to me, like life is happening to me. Then you have people who become more aware and they're like, oh, this is happening for me. And in this higher state of consciousness, we actually start realizing that, oh, it's actually happening through me. There's a there's a relationship here. And so um, I'm participating in opening my system so that I can be the channel for this energy versus having to come out here and try to connect with this energy. It's within me and it's channeling through me. And that to me uh, can only happen at that neutral point. And so that's uh, anything you want to add about that? No, I I think that's a great. Yeah. Great, yeah. So then you might be asking yourself, you know, like, so, well, how do we get to that, that neutral point? Right. And, and that is not something that you can gain from having some kind of insight. Okay. Like a lot of mindset work is based around you having insights like, oh, um, here's how I am. Here's why I do this. Here's why they do this. I have an insight. Let me shift my perception. And then like, I get to, I get to shift what that looks like in my reality. In, in this practice, it's very different. Um, it's more like there is an experience inside the body and a frequency that it's carrying. And by relaxing the body and having a parasympathetic response, um, something that is getting held in the fascial tissue in your body, in your energetic space can actually move through. And the universe abhors a vacuum. If something shifts or changes, something else is going to be generated. Something new is going to evolve from that. And that's what we see over and over again. So for those of you guys that that really want to practice this, you want to get a direct experience with it because it's the only way that you can learn it. You Again, you cannot learn it from reading a book, can't even learn it from listening to Elon and I speak. It might sound like a good idea, but ultimately it has to become something that you do on, as a daily practice because every single day there are fractional or big things that happen in your life that are going to elicit a response in your body whether or not you understand why they're happening. It doesn't even matter if you understand why they're happening. Life is happening. Circumstances are changing. Governments are making decisions. People are making choices around you. People are pissed off or happy or whatever it is. And all of it can upset your system or, or trigger something inside of you based on uh, how you view the world, certain conditioning that you have, how your biological makeup has been organized. You know, all these very... Um, complex and extravagant systems that a human being is and so this to to learn it to experience it directly which is how you learn it has to be experienced firsthand and so what we recommend if you're not already part of our uh, facebook group you go to join old uh you sign up for the group and once you're approved in the group we have a, a welcome post you'll also get it via email we have a welcome post and there is a active healing meditation in there okay active healing meditation why why active because you don't just sit there and try to quiet your mind okay uh healing because it has a, a healing aspect to it and the reason that it heals is for the same reason of what we're talking about here with surrender is that the the meditation is intended to bring a part of you not all of you but a part of you at a time to a neutral point okay when you bring the body to a neutral point, and again, every every single thing that any of us are experiencing, thoughts that we're having, this is not who you are. This is a part of you that is hijacking the system and then speaking through your consciousness. But what you really are, like who you really are, is the awareness that's observing all of this. And so the first thing to learn, and again, it's what we teach at all our live events and through our programs, is how do you bring up your awareness so that you live at that state of awareness as often or all the time. And when you do that, this neutral point awareness, if you want to call it that, what we call the awareness effect, but it, again, the awareness effect is about becoming more neutral, more compassionate, um, just allows you to start noticing every single day that when these triggers are happening, just like with our client, you can either fight with it with your mind and, and do all that jousting, or you can do these practices of surrender bring yourself to a neutral point, watch this energy move through the system, and then watch as the field generates something new through your system that's usually rather unexpected. And you yeah. can do this every single day on demand as much as you're willing to practice this. And the more that you practice it, uh, the more the intelligence and wisdom 
can start working through you and these these bigger truths become uh, self-apparent, not because you've read them in the book, just because they become apparent through your own experience. And then you honestly start seeing like the majesty of how this reality is put together versus having to like, you know, figure out how to get yourself to a good place in your life. Yeah. The, the big shift and, you know, like I'm a, my conversation was always growing up that I'm a loser. So that created this like massive overachiever aspect, right? So the only way that I was ever able to produce results or thought that the only way that I could produce results was by working faster, working harder, working smarter. And I was just like constantly out there doing, 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 doing. Um, and when that's the way that you produce results, I say this all the time. It's like, just because you produce results a certain way doesn't make it the best way to produce results. It just means that you've habituated that way to produce results. So if you've habituated being really, really smart and researching and getting ahead in life that way, like that's a really good strategy for you not necessarily the best one for you to produce results, right? Um, if you're someone that just like works really fast, like, okay, so you've habituated that. Again, not the best way for you to produce results, just what you kept doing over decades and decades and decades. So for us, we all have um, like feedback, I guess is the word, that what we're doing produces results, right? And then you have this other system, which we don't really implement, which is that system of allowing, right? Like everything that we've been talking about, this surrender. And we've all had the experience, several of them, right? Where things just showed up in the most magical, unexplainable way. It just, it took your breath away with like, and you start to see all these dots and how they connected and it just, it blows your mind. But because it happens so far and few between, we don't have the ability to trust that way of producing results. So we constantly default to whatever it is, the way that we produce results. Okay. So what happens in the beginning is it takes a lot more awareness and conscious effort to allow for this new paradigm and this new system to come online and produce results for you because you you don't have enough trust or enough feedback that it actually works so in the beginning what's going to happen is you're going to keep defaulting because this system is going to feel like maybe it's moving too slow or not at the speed that you're used to or maybe you're not doing enough or you're not in it and active and whatever it is right like you're going to come up with something and so you're going to want to keep going back to this default method. As you begin to produce outrageous results, I mean like outrageous results using this new paradigm, you begin to get more feedback that this is working. And what starts to happen is the, the sh there's like a shift in the balance. And as the shift in the balance happens, now this other system, which before was like atrophied and not working, is producing better, consistently better results, like unimaginable better results. And it becomes a lot easier to trust and surrender. So in the beginning, it takes a tremendous amount of trust and courage to be able to let go of the thing that you know so well that's produced so many incredible results for you to allow for something to flourish. And then as that thing flourishes, you will quickly realize that the way that you've habituated to produce results while you are exceptional at it is not even a tenth of what this other system is able to create for your life with so much less effort, with so much more ease, with peace, without overwhelm, without being overworked, without feeling like you killed yourself to create that result. And the results will be infinitely bigger and better than anything that you can imagine because you can only create from the building blocks that you have internally. Right? I said this analogy the other day, like if all you know 
and all you've eaten is McDonald's. And you're like, you know what? I want to step up. I want like a three Michelin star cuisine. But all you know is McDonald's. I don't give a shit how fucking gifted you are and how many books you read. And but like, you're not turning that into three Michelin stars. You get that? Like there's just, it's, you need different ingredients. And so this doer can only move and jigger things around to create kind of more of the same, right? There's like, like linear growth in fashion. This, this other mechanism is not tied to any of that. It's not tied to time. It's not tied to your ideas around money or your ideas around speed or, or anything that's possible. It just, it just shows up like that trap door for this client. And it's so beautiful for us to be able to share this information and watch people actually create these unimaginable results for themselves in their lives with ease, like really with ease. And it's what we want for every single person, whether you're listening to our podcast, whether you're in our Facebook group, whether you just came across us, like, honestly, if I could give you and I could like bat, pop you over the head with a magic wand, like this is what I would want for every person to experience because it really is just absolute magic. I think you mean, I agree. I agree. So uh, with that said, guys, um, you know, the, if you're, if you're listening to these podcasts, again, you're in the group, wherever you are on Telegram, all the different channels, you can be uh, connecting with us these days. Um, and you really want a, a big gulp taste of what we're talking about here. If you want to take it from concept to, you know, and, oh, this sounds like a really good idea to having it be an as lived experience then your next step is to come to a live event. And we have, we, depending on when you listen to this podcast, it could be a few weeks or uh, out, but uh, we usually hold live events roughly every two months or so, sometimes less. Um, and at any time when you're listening to this podcast, you head over to intuitivemind.live or satoriprime.com forward slash live and uh, go get yourself a ticket to our next live event. They, uh, we move back to a, um, a two day, uh, we felt like that just uh, fulfilled on the promise of the course better than just doing a one day experience so people have some integration time with us as well. Um, and so, yeah, the next one's coming up shortly. You definitely want to go uh, grab your ticket. Also, if at any time uh, you would like to speak to someone from our team, um, and that means talking to our senior coaches, people who have been working with us for years, they've been with us down to the jungle, they've been through all our coursework, they're coaching other people. These are highly, highly proficient human beings um, have shown time and time again to get extraordinary results in their own lives. These are the people you'd be talking to. Uh, you can head over to callsatori.com. Again, callsatori.com and set up a 15-minute complimentary discovery call uh, with our coaches. And you guys can um, just, we'll, we'll take a brief survey from you guys after you book your call. It'll let us know a little bit about you. Um, and they can uh, look if what we're doing here would support the type of goals that you have in your life. They'll tell you what kind of um, processes most of our clients have gone through, and then you can choose whether or not that sounds good for you. So again, those are your kind of two starting points uh, with us here. Uh, with that said, I think we'll wrap it up here. We love you guys very much. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we hope that you explore and get curious about the your own power of surrendering. Just look at what in your life right now you're fighting against. And even if it's just a matter of saying, hey, look, let me uh, let me make that less important in my life right now. Let me not battle with it so much. It's a good place to start. And again, the meditation that I talked about that we offer in our um, on our Facebook group is a really, really beautiful resource to start um, actually doing this kind of practice every single day and realigning your body to some of these principles that we're talking about here. All right, guys, we love you very much. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.